Hi folks, so today I'm going to be covering a small but powerful feature that we've added in to the latest GSAP release. If you've used scroll trigger or scroll smoother before, you might have run into this behavior. So imagine you've got a scrubbed animation above the fold of your web page. Sometimes when the page loads, the animation loads partway through. It doesn't load from the very beginning. It kind of looks like the animation has played some of the way through and then paused. So why does this happen? Let's take a little look. Let's have a mini refresher on how scroll trigger works first. So you can add a scroll trigger to any GSAP animation, like tween or timeline. It's just saying, hey, scroll trigger, I would like this animation to be triggered by scroll. Here we've got a little spinning box. So we can tell scroll trigger when to play the scroll animation with the start and end triggers. There's a bunch of different ways that we can write out our triggers. This is shorthand for when the bottom of the box hits the bottom of the viewport. But however we write out our triggers, under the hood, scroll trigger converts the value into a numeric scroll position in pixels. We can also add visual markers to check out exactly where our markers fall on the page. So we can see as we scroll down, when the boxes move past this point, they all animate. So one by one, they're hitting that point and they're animating. Now, if we start off with some boxes in view, these boxes would have already moved past their start position. So they'd fire instantly on page load. On board so far? Awesome. <laughs> so let's take a look at scrubbed animations. So scrubbed animations don't just fire as we pass the start point. Their progress is stretched out between the start and end marker the progress of the animation is tied into the scroll progress. So now all the boxes will start animating as they pass the start marker, and then they finish animating when they go off the top of the page here. Nice. Okay, so now if we get rid of the spacer at the top here so that there's less space to scroll from, and we get rid of the spacer at the bottom so that there's less space to scroll into, um, we can see that some of the boxes are in view when the page loads. So you can see that these boxes have already passed their start position. So these animations are partially completed already. They don't get the chance to start from the very beginning. This is the same if we scroll down to the boxes at the end. So these boxes at the end never get the chance to hit their end marker. So their animations never finish. Now I'm more visual, so these boxes work quite well in my head, but for the more logical folks, let's do some consoling. So let's log out the min and max scroll values. Okay, so we've got zero for min, obs, and then we've got 1,526. This is the maximum that the page can scroll. So let's take a little look at the boxes. Let's log out the start and end values for each of these boxes. Oh, we can check if they're in view as well on page load. We've got scroll trigger is in viewport for that. So let's do a little ternary and then we can do some little emojis. Um, if it's in view, we'll do some googly eyes. And if it's hidden, we can do a little monkey. Um, so now if we look at the values, we can see that box one and two are in view already. We've got googly eyes um, and their start values. If we look at the start value is negative. So this is less than zero. And now right at the bottom, if we look at the last two boxes, their end values are higher than the maximum scroll distance. Now this isn't buggy behavior. This behavior is totally in line with how scrubbed animations work, but sometimes it might not be what you want. You might want all of the animations, whether they're in view or not, to start at their initial position and finish animating by the time you hit the bottom of the page. So solution time. If you've used GSAP utils at all, you might have run into clamp. Clamp's a really cool little function. So we can define a minimum and a maximum range, and then we can use it to clamp any value between those numbers. We need to make sure that the past trigger values are never less than zero before the top of the page or more than the maximum scroll position. So we want to clamp the trigger value between these two points. This is a bit wordy, so we've made some nice shorthand for you to use. Under the hood, it's just like running the resulting pixel value through this clamp function. Right, let's do it in the code. So this is nice and easy. We're just gonna wrap the start and end values in clamp. And now all of our scrubbed scroll triggers are gonna play from start to end, no matter where the triggers are placed or whether they're in view or not when the page loads. Awesome. So we can also use this over in scroll smoother land. Let's take a little look there. Scroll Smoother lets us add effects to elements. So we can add uh, data speed or data lag. We're gonna look at data speed right now. Um, 
Now speed lets you move elements through the viewport at different speeds. It's kind of a nice easy way to do parallax type effects. And under the hood, these effects are basically just scrubbed animations. So right here, we've got some boxes. They're all in a line. So same as with scroll trigger, if we add effects true here, these elements are in view already. And because of that, they're already part way through an animation. When they hit the middle of the screen, you can see that they all line up. So they reach their kind of resting place and that's the default behavior. So if we did want them all to start in their initial state, we can add clamp to the data attributes. So just like we did with the scroll triggered animations. So we're going to pop clamp in here and now on page load, they're all at their start position. So now they only start to animate when we scroll down. It's worth mentioning that this only applies to boxes that are in view. So if we scroll down to this second set of boxes, we can see that they hit their resting place in the center. So that's just the default behavior. Um, it just means that anything that is in view stays where it's meant to be in the design on page load. So it's a little bit hard to understand with boxes sometimes I find. It might be easier to actually take a look at a design, a normal web page to kind of see why this would be useful. So let's take this design, for example. We want to animate this row of images here, and we want to also draw a little circle around the word clamp with draw SVG. So we've got a scrubbed scroll trigger animation, and then we've got a little bit of scroll smoother effects that we're adding in. So if we take a little look at our draw SVG animation, it's okay if it's triggering on load. So we've passed the start marker already. Um, and then when the page loads, the animation is going to play. But if we add a scrub and some markers, we can see that it loads almost all of the way through. The start triggers being passed by quite a way. So it's more than halfway through. So let's fix this with clamp. We're going to clamp the start value. And now when the page loads, it's at the beginning. It waits for the user to scroll before progressing. Awesome. So let's do a little data speed on these images. We're going to try and scroll them through the viewport at different speeds. So we're going to enable effects and there's that issue again. So the images all start off in the wrong place and the layout looks messy. Like no designer is going to sign that off. It doesn't look how they intended. So let's clamp them. And if we add clamp, you can see that on page load, we get a nice orderly starting position. Everything starts off where it's been laid out in the DOM. Let's add a little pin to the text just for fun so that the images go underneath. And there's our effect. So I personally think that this is super handy, especially if you're working in a code base where you've got components that are a little bit more flexible. You might not know where they're going to end up on a web page. So if you don't know where they're going to end up, you might end up having to write some conditional logic to work out where to place the triggers, depending on whether they're in view or not. So this is quite nice because you don't have to worry about any of that. You can just pass the logic over to scroll trigger. You just pop clamp on and it sorts everything out for you. So I hope this was helpful and you learned something that will help you in your future projects. I will chat to you soon.